Back in 2006, FIR reported on Radio Shack firing 400 workers via email. Forbes called it a new low in management. Nonsense, said the leaders of P&O Ferries. That was nothing. You want to see a new low in management? Just you wait. We have the story coming up in this episode of For Immediate Release. Another fine podcast from the FIR Podcast Network. This is For Immediate Release, the podcast for communicators. Everybody and welcome to episode number 240 of For Immediate Release. I'm Shell Holtz. And I'm Neville Hobson. We have a story today that you might remember Better.com and the firing of employees via a Zoom call. We have something very similar, but on a bigger, bigger scale. This involves P&O Ferries over here in the UK who fired 800 employees in one go. Now, this is quite a story, Shell. It's, it's, it's truly truly jaw-dropping what this company did uh, a few days ago. Um, P&O is uh, a venerable British name from the 19th century, a car ferry operator. The P&O stands for Peninsula and Oriental. That was a shipping line back in the day. And they are one of the biggest operators of ferries that travel across uh, from uh, southern England to uh, continental Europe, to France, to Belgium and the Netherlands. Uh, and uh, various ports in those countries. So what they did uh, was fired 800 employees all in one go. And this was done via, get this, a pre-recorded video played to them via a Zoom call, uh, from what I've read. Uh, No individuals were there, nothing, except burly security guards, all dressed in black with body protection armor, some of them carrying handcuffs. So you kind of get the scene of how the scene had been set for this. No one knew it was coming. So uh, this is uh, people who run the ferries, ranging from the captains right through to the guys who metaphorically shovel the coal into the boilers down in the engine room. And they were escorted off all the ships simultaneously up and down the various ports they were all located in. Uh, The company announced that all sailings are suspended until further notice, so people who had bookings couldn't get ferries. So the whole thing was attracted a huge amount of attention. So they have gone through uh, uh, vilification without any question in the media, social and mainstream. It's been headline news for, well, for the past week. So from a communication point of view, this is not good for a company if they have any concern about their brand. But the interesting thing, I suppose, in part of that scene setting as an explainer, if you will, is trying to understand why they did this. Uh, literally get rid of 800 people, which is the majority of the people who are, who are responsible for operating the ferries. So P&O Ferries is owned by uh, a company called DP World based in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, one of the uh, logistics giants. I think the DP stands for Dubai Ports. They were the big port operator in that country. Uh, but they own P&O Ferries, and DP World is in turn controlled by the Dubai Sovereign Wealth Fund. So there's a very strong political angle in all this as it got elevated to the political level, as it has done. Uh, so they sacked all these people, as we say here, not fired. They sacked them all. And there have been protests everywhere uh, at ports up and down the country, demonstrations. Um, one thing it has done is unify something I've not seen for decades in this country, unified the government and the trade unions uh, in in the, in the criticism and condemnation of this company, uh, a couple of revelations have happened today too. It turns out that uh, the company uh, admitted uh, in front of a uh, uh, being hauled up in front of a group of MPs in the House of Commons that yes, they did break employment law by not consulting with employees. Uh, it's a law here. If you if you're going to perform mass firings of the type they did. There is a legal requirement for a consultation period to to arrange the settlements and, and the things that you would take. That's about 30 days, typically. They didn't do any of that. They did not consult with the union. And in the words of the CEO of p uh, who said, if we did that, we knew they'd never agree to it. <laughs> Imagine that. So we didn't do it. Uh, and um, so the outrage is huge. Um, the media has got quotes from uh, many, many people in the PR business in particular 
talking about the PR crisis that has emerged. And I know you have views about that. Um, so it, it, it's interesting. And there's more to go into the detail on this. But I'll stop here because I want to get your reaction to this, Shell, given we talked about Better.com. Uh, on an episode at about the time they did, they did the the CEO dismissed all these people in a live Zoom call. It wasn't a pre-recorded message, and we expressed kind of outrage ourselves and and bemusement that someone would actually do this the way they did it. And so here we have something that I I would argue is way worse than that. Uh, this is uh, on a huge scale. Um, the reasons they're giving is that if we hadn't done this, we wouldn't have a business tomorrow. There was no other alternative, they have said. The government's not buying that. They say they took advantage of a loophole. But what's your take on it? I'm gobsmacked (laughs) by this behavior. Uh, Clearly, it's leadership that does not care uh, what people think, what their own people think, what the public thinks, what their customers think. I think that they will probably survive this regrettably because people need to avail themselves of the service. And once the dust has settled, they'll start buying tickets again. Some won't. Some will say, I'm done with them and I'll use a competitor. Uh, I suspect they'll they'll survive, but their reputation is going to be damaged long term, I believe. I can't imagine that people will want to... Uh, you know, promote their posts, for example, share uh, what they're uh, promoting online. They're not going to want to engage at all or, you know, join a loyalty program. Uh, I, th- I think people are going to – P&O now stands for pissed and off as, as far as <laughs> I'm concerned. Uh, I think this is different from the better.com scenario in a couple of ways. First of all, they weren't – laying off everybody. They were laying off what the CEO considered to be uh, the dead weight, the people who weren't you know, carrying their weight in the organization. Uh, here, th- everyone who was sacked is being replaced by somebody from an agency uh, that charges less than they were paying before, considerably less. So this was a cost-saving move uh, that did not take into account human dignity by any stretch of the imagination. Now, what I find remarkable about this is the fact that they don't seem to care about the reaction, uh, the bad publicity, uh, the outright hate that is being leveled at them, not just in the UK by the people who are affected, but globally. Uh, It it seems to be that people are, are, are just completely outraged and the company just doesn't seem to care. It, it's not that they neglected to engage their communicators. I, I think it looks to me like a conscious decision that, well, if we tried to communicate this, you know, it was, uh, it was almost like if we go to the trade unions to talk about it, they're going to reject it. So we're just going to ignore that part of the law. Uh, they're just ignoring <laughs> this dimension no. of doing business. Uh, figuring that they're a commodity and that people are going to continue to do business with them. Well, he actually did say that. Uh, the CEO of um, of Spino Ferries, a gentleman by the name of Peter Hebblethwaite, he gave an apology uh, uh, to give him some credit, I suppose. But he remained adamant, according to media reports, that there was no other option. And he gave no indication whatsoever that he would change anything about what, what they have done. Um, the blatantness of it is quite breathtaking that they admit all these things. They didn't communicate with anyone because they knew there'd be a negative reaction. They didn't consult with the union because they knew they'd never go for it, so they went and did it anyway. Uh, and you're right. It, 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 it shows a complete disregard to uh, the, uh, the civilised behaviours, the norms of employment and relationship building, loyalty of employees, all that. That doesn't, doesn't exist there in that, that company. Um, I don't know the dire straits they are in, according to this, uh, to the statements from uh, from P and uh, What some of the media have been talking about is that uh, they are in a hole of about a hundred million pounds. Which, frankly, in the overall scheme of numbers we hear about these days, sounds like a petty cash amount to me. Because here you're talking about companies about billions of losses. Here they got a hundred million. And as a result, they got rid of 800 employees and they say that that rehiring or hiring uh, contract workers at half their rates will solve their problem. 
And I think what they've done is actually dug themselves a, a mega bigger problem than the one they currently got with that. Um, it is quite terrible. Uh, and I want to refer briefly to uh, a, a really good opinion piece I read uh, just the other day from Mark Bukowski. Uh, Mark will be a name known, uh, very familiar to many of the listeners to this podcast. His about page is great. It talks about him being PR written large. He represents international celebrities and corporate heavyweights, is a sought after communicator on the world of celebrity, the media and spin. Uh, he's well regarded. Uh, and he had a really, I thought, quite insightful post that was uh, a good dose of cynicism mixed in with the reality. Uh, he, he asks the question, I suppose, or makes a statement, will this abhorrent treatment of workers impact p and Ferry's brand and profit? Sadly, I suspect not, he says. Time and again, we see big business bully workers and customers and get away with it. This is particularly true where a brand dominates a certain market. Condemnation alone is not enough. Our consumer is likely to wait for the next ferry rather than take a P&O one. Will freight companies endanger their already overpressured supply lines? I suspect the answer to both these questions is no. The government seems reluctant to close these loopholes. Fire and rehire is one of many, which begs the question, can consumers, media or campaigners have a real influence on brand behavior? That's a good point, don't you think? It's an excellent point. And if we want to have an influence on behavior, then we, and by that I mean the public, not communicators, uh, need to take stronger action. I think the demonstrations that you've seen, uh, the people who are blocking the ports, that's the type of thing that is going to have an impact. Now, another thing that's going to have an impact is any kind of consideration this organization will look for in the future from government. I mean, I don't know if you've read the letter that was sent to them. Uh, yes. This is a, a joint letter from two ministers. Uh, it yes, begins it by saying, we are writing to you to express in the strongest possible terms the UK government's anger and disappointment at the way that P&O ferries handled the redundancy of so many of your staff this week. Uh, the way that staff who have given years of dedicated service to P&O and played a critical role in keeping our country going during the pandemic have been treated has been appalling. Uh, mm -hmm. It therefore gives the government no pleasure to say that P&O has lost the trust of the public and given business a bad name. Now, this is an organization, as I was reading in some accounts, that got money from the government uh, during the pandemic uh, to keep going uh, and to turn around and flaunt laws uh, and incur the wrath of government ministers uh, seems ill-advised to me. What uh, I, I, I don't know what kind of consideration they might need in the future from government, but uh, I, yeah. I, I think that the government Don't might shut. be very reluctant uh, to accommodate that. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right, Charles. The, the door is shut in that area. Uh, the interesting, interesting point that Mark Bokowski concludes with, I think, is absolutely spot on. He talks about um, how we're all complicit. That's equal to your point. A company does something dreadful and we say, I will never give X my business again. But within weeks or months, sometimes days, whether through necessity or convenience, we're drawn back. He, he, he mentions in the corporate world, just as in the political, rhetoric and righteous outrage isn't enough to make dominant brands behave. If things are ever going to change, then activism needs to be channeled into a very clear purpose whether that's pressure on government to change the laws, intervene or suffer at the ballot box. I'm reminded of uh, uh, some of the activism we see or have seen uh, over climate change, for instance, where we have the likes of Greenpeace and more recently uh, Extinction Rebellion, who do stunts that capture imagination's attention dramatically. Um, we, need, we need things like that for things like this. I'm thinking not of Extinction Rebellions where they've got people gluing their hands to the roads with super glue. I mean, what do you do? Cut the hands off to, to remove them. Uh, more like what we saw with BP and palm oil, for instance, uh, where you've got these stunts at the headquarters, which get media attention, all that elevates attention in, in a way that doesn't insult people. And I think we uh, probably need that. Trouble is, who's going to do that? Yep. I think going back to Mark's earlier point, uh, people... Uh, tend to be, uh, oh, well, you know, I'll never do this. And then three weeks later, they do. So that's human nature. One thing that I haven't seen is how P&O's competitors 
are responding to this. I think there is a tremendous opportunity here for public relations, for marketing uh, that talks about how great we treat our people and you should be spending your money with us because some of that money will go to the great treatment of our people uh, as opposed to giving it to P&O, which you've seen how they treat their people. Uh, one other thing that I've seen uh, is that they seem to be dribbling out information at, at P&O. Just today, they released information about what people who have been separated from the organization are being paid. Uh, we, we saw this with the Toyota Sudden Impact a sudden acceleration crisis several years ago that the crisis just continued because they didn't put all their cards on the table at once. As painful as it may be to share everything you have to share, that gets it over with. And uh, by by dribbling it out in response to circumstances, oh, I guess we're going to have to share this now, it just prolongs the crisis and keeps it in front of people. Well, it, it makes me wonder what role communicators had in all of this. I oh, I suspect not none. Because uh, I, looking at this behavior, I can't imagine anyone who calls him or herself a communicator would have been involved in some of that stuff. But I think you're right. This 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 has been dribbled out. This is not a plan, it seems. It's like, oh, we, we have to do this now. We we didn't want to, but we have to now because people are asking about it or or it's it's going to come out, so we better say something. The behavior is truly, it's, got to, it, it, it's hard to fathom. The, the logic in, in, in the behavior. Uh, and I think it, it really comes down to, um, from what I've read, uh, what I've seen on TV about this, that they don't seem to care at all what anyone thinks. Uh, they, uh, are, I think, are arguing that the risks of the bad publicity and reputational hit is worth it for them, as they see it, to survive as a company. And that, that's what seems to be driving it. So yeah, I, I, can, I, I can picture this, the <clears throat> senior executive who made this decision, who in the movie will be played by Mark Strong, uh, having uh, the PR person in front of him uh, trying to explain why we need to develop a plan for this. And he says, we have to do this with or without a plan. So let's just rip off the Band-Aid. <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> <laughs> That, Are we done? Uh, this, yeah, we're <laughs> done. This is this is an extraordinary story, and it's not all told yet. So we may we may be come back to this. We may, but for now, that'll be a thirty for this episode of Four Immediate Release. <laughs> <laughs>